We are joined now by the uh, Lumberjacks from Stephen F. Austin, Coach Kyle Keller. His student athletes with us are Shannon Bogues and uh, Ivan Kinnett. Coach, we'll look to you first for an opening comment. Um, I wish we could have ended the game at halftime, obviously, but the game's 40 minutes. Uh, I give Texas Tech a tremendous amount of credit. Their coach, Chris Beard, their team embodies you know, his spirit and toughness. And they imposed their will, obviously, the last 10 minutes or so of the game. And, and you know, my guys try. They always try. Uh, but we just didn't have enough tonight. And, um, you know, we just wasn't our night. Thank you, Coach. Questions now for the two guys. We'll come back for Coach Keller at the end. First will be on um, your left in the middle. Hey, Kevin John, uh, CBS 19 and Tyler. Uh, question is for you, Shannon. Um, obviously, we saw you go out with an injury briefly in the second half. Um, can you just talk a little bit about that and how that affected you, affected you offensively uh, for the rest of the game? Um, I just started cramping a little bit. Um, and then after that, I couldn't really get back in the groove. But after, it was just a cramp, really. OK, we'll follow up. Um, Ivan, question for you. You know, uh, in the first half, you really got them going offensively, um, making some big shots. You know, can you just kind of explain, you know, you being a senior and being out there, taking that leadership role and leading them offensively, how you were able to kind of uh, get the momentum going in the first half? Um, well, I was just trying to uh, find open spots for my guys. Um, being a senior, I just wanted to go out there and just give it all I got and just play as hard as I could. And um, if I see someone open, I'm going to pass them the ball. And guys like Shannon over here can just score however they want. So. Other questions for the two guys? Okay, we'll move over to the right. Ivan John Kruger from the Daily Sentinel. Uh, the second half, you guys came out and scored three quick threes. Um, what, what was the, uh, the feeling at that point as far as the momentum? And then talk a little bit about the last five minutes, uh, kind of what was going on during those five minutes. You'd like uh, both to respond? Okay, Ivan. Yeah, when we when we were hitting those threes, uh, I mean, we've seen them before this year. I felt like we were about to start pulling away. Um, they looked kind of defeated, but every time we made a run, they just responded and made a run back. Um, so, I mean, that's credits to them. They're a tough team. And then in the last five minutes, uh, it just, we just were having a, a tough time scoring, and you know, some things didn't go our way. Move back to the left in the middle. Keith Leventhal, CBS 19, for both of you guys. The foul trouble the team seemed to be in, not, not trouble until late in the game, but just a lot of fouls seemed to be accumulating for you guys. Did that affect what you were trying to do offensively through the, the better part of the second half? We'll let Shannon go first. You said that the foul, I'm sorry. The, just the foul trouble, the foul situation, you guys were, not you specifically, but the team was in. Did that kind of affect what you guys wanted to do? You're having different guys coming in and out of the game. You know, playing different guys in different spots with Ty and, and, and TJ being out because of their foul situation. Um, like playing key barns at four some and that kind of stuff. Having to adjust to that. Ivan uh, probably yeah. know better. Yeah, we we should go to Ivan. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, it definitely affected uh, what we do on offense. Um, it was, uh, you know, when you're used to certain guys playing a lot of minutes and uh, being in certain spots, and then you don't have them on the court out there, and you know when it matters, uh, you know it's kind of hard. You got to figure it out on the fly. So it was it was different, but we just tried to get through it, and it was obviously tough not having those guys out there with us. Okay. Other questions for Shannon or Ivan? No hands. Okay, guys, we'll let you go back to the locker room with your SID, Charlie Hurley. Uh, congratulations on a terrific season. Thanks for coming to, uh, up on stage, and thank you very much. We'll go to questions now for um, Coach Keller. There you go. Take it. Yeah. Who wants to go first for Coach? Coach will go into the back by the TV riser. Coach Keller, Michael Coleman. What's up, Michael? How, How you doing? doing Congratulations man? on an outstanding season. Thanks. Could you talk? I noticed the, 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 the disparity in points in the paint, mm -hmm. Tech versus SFA, was in, in, not in your favor. Could you address that? Well, that's been our strength all season. And, and, and 
obviously we, we wanted to score points in the paint. That make it really hard the way they play defense to to get it in there. And I thought we did a good job at times of getting it in there. We were we weren't very successful at scoring in it. You know they uh, they they clog it up on the weak side and and. You know, to their credit, they, they make you throw it out and, and shoot perimeter shots, and they put bodies in front of you. And, you know, I, you know, they blocked a bunch. Of, I don't know how many shots they blocked tonight, but it seemed like every time we went and got to the rim, at least in the second half, they were really challenged. And uh, But that's how we've won games this year, is scoring points in the paint. And our inability to score points in the paint, uh, to me, is that and not scoring points off our steals and turnovers tonight is the reason why we didn't win the game. Hey, Coach, we'll go to the middle on the left side. Hey, Coach Keller, Kevin John, CBS 19. Um, you had said earlier, you know, you wish the game could have ended at halftime. Um, you guys were pretty much dominant through the majority of the game and, and until the last couple of minutes there. Mm -hmm. Can you just talk about what the difference was in those last few minutes and then what you guys did the first 30 some minutes of the game? Well, Evans, obviously, a senior point guard, dominated the second half. I mean, he had four points at half, and he gets 19 the second half. You know, I've got Ty Charles as an assistant coach in his last game over there with me, who had guarded him a lot of the night. We had to switch him off because of what you guys just said. He was in foul trouble. So I needed him on the court because he's, you know, is our senior leader and dominates a lot of different things for us. Offensively, he makes things run. He, even though he didn't score many points tonight, he makes everything smooth for us. And he started the game guarding him and, and, uh, and not having – and that's no – I mean, Evan, yeah, there's a reason why he's all Big 12. There's a reason why he's on a lot of draft picks. I mean, he's a heck of a player. I mean, <coughs> excuse me. You know, I think it's a six-point game maybe, and, and he goes through right through Aaron Augustine, and T.J. Holyfield just splits the ball screen, just imposed his will and got through it when the, when the game was on the line. I mean, that's what, that's what pros do. That's what seniors do. We didn't have that happen for us tonight. <coughs> Other questions for Coach? Okay, we'll continue on in the middle here on the <laughs> coach's Keith, left. Keith Leventhal, CBS 19. Uh, coach Beard said you guys were one of the best teams in the country. He said you definitely weren't a 14 seed. Was that something that not bulletin board He's material? Nice. Do you guys feel like that you really were able, I mean, Texas Tech's a three seed. Did you were really able to, to play with them and, and maybe were underseeded? I don't know. We, you know, there's there's 68 teams in the, end of the tournament seeding that have any, to me it doesn't have anything to do with it. I mean, I've coached on a number, a number one seed in the tournament, so you know we didn't make the final four. So uh, to me, seeds don't matter. You know, when the game starts, the game starts, and that's what we try to convince our kids. Our kids didn't. They didn't, they were just they got to play against some dudes they knew. You know, Ty knew some guys on their team, and uh, you know the millennials today they don't even watch college basketball. They don't. They didn't know. A lot of our guys didn't even know who those cats were because they don't. They don't watch the game. You know, they're they're on their phone and doing that kind of stuff. I, I hate to say it, but you know, as much as you or I or anybody in here watches the games, they don't. And that, or the NBA, <coughs> they might watch the same dunk contest in February on TNT or whatever. Uh, but that's about the extent of it. Hey, thanks a lot. I might need this. Or something stronger. Again in the middle, on the left side, coach's left. Kevin John, CBS 19. Uh, coach Keller, you know, obviously it wasn't the outcome that you wanted, but just looking back on the season, um, what do you take away from this uh, particular team? And um, as, you, as you do walk away and reflect on it, what, what stands out to you about this squad? You know, it's a, a hard time to really collect my thoughts. You know, I thought we had three great seniors who came together. A lot of tears in the locker room after the game because it's how much invested uh, they had in, in our university. Um, the, the thing I think that they did was we've been living off everybody else that had been before us. Um, the players and coaches that had come before us. I think the, my staff and, and the current players on our team kind of created our own, you know, a little bit of our own legacy. And, and so I'm, I'm proud that, that we're, I, I look at a lot of championship trophies and nets in my office that other people have won. And it's great for recruiting. And, and I love that. But to be honest with you, I'd like, I'm glad we get to have one of our own in there finally. Uh, and I'm glad our guys get to, we're able to see this. This is about probably 
between I never have counted between 30 and 40 NCAA tournament games that I've been a part of, and I'm glad they got to experience that for a lot of these kids. Closing questions now for Coach Keller. We'll swing back to the right. Josh Peter with USA Today. No pop quiz, huh? Uh, how do you know? <laughs> no. Um, how do you know about millennial behavior, and how might that behavior impact college basketball? Well, I, I think it does a lot. I, I, you know, if you're going to be around kids today, you better read it. You better study it. I mean, I've got a, an eight-year-old and an eleven-year-old, and I've got the greatest wife and kids I could ever imagine. I'm the most blessed dude you've ever met. Trust me, I shouldn't be here today. But if I don't read it and study it and and learn and try to figure these kids out, I have no chance to coach it because the way I was taught as a child was, hey, you're going to eat what's on your plate. If not, you're going to sit here. I had to sit at the kitchen table one Saturday afternoon because I didn't want to eat green beans or salmon patties. So we have a lot of green beans on our team meals. And, and I tell that story to our guys. And But you have to adjust. You better learn to give and some take with these kids, I think. But you have to be stubborn enough to uh, impose your will on them to get them to come together as a team and give them a lot of love, I think. Sometimes it's not very much fun. They don't like me very much sometimes. Any other questions for Coach Keller? No hands? All right, Coach, we'll let you go. Thank you, guys. Again, congratulations on a great year. Thanks. Thanks for being with us.